Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am Peter Worski, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal. In this eighth video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on an introduction to PHP, I want to walk you through functions, how you can use them, why they're important, and what their syntax is. This is just going to be a basic introduction. I'm going to show you the various ways that we can use functions. And in the ninth video tutorial, we're going to take a look at a more complex example where we're going to create a form for creating a starting lineup for a hockey team. Um, and we're going to use functions to actually do that and how we can leverage them. Now, that said, if this video tutorial helps you, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. I appreciate the feedback. Uh, I read every comment and we'll get back to you. Additionally, if you have any questions, please don't send me a personal message. I get a lot of those, uh, but it's kind of hard to respond to them. And it's not as helpful because other users don't see the response that you're getting. And so a lot of times they're duplicative. So please use the comments. Uh, feel free to write in there and I'll get back to you. Additionally, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so. I do monitor those and report back every month on my earnings and my changes in analytics, subscriptions included. Lastly, please visit torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store where you can purchase video tutorials, this one included, as soon as I finish it and get it up there. Uh, and you'll receive the HD version, iPod version, all available for download. Uh, they're uh, distributed through Amazon uh, Cloud uh, CloudFront. Uh, so they're going to come in you know, no time and you'll download them, have them instantly, and you'll have them permanently. That said, let's get started on tutorial eight. You'll see here my script is entirely just print hello world. And if I go over to my actual browser and I reload, all I'm getting is hello world. Now, what I'd like to be able to do is create a function where I can pass a string in and then that will be printed whatever. Uh, it's an abstract way. I don't want to go ahead and have to print out 10,000 different print statements. I just want to print whatever I actually pass in. And so that's where functions have come in pretty handy. They allow you to abstract um, or make abstract your code so you can reuse it in different ways. Uh, so rather than have uh, you know the same code written four or five times doing maybe one or two different things, you can create a function which will make it a little bit more abstract. You can pass in a parameter and then that function will act on something. And we've seen examples of that with like print R. So we have print R, we can pass in an array and it will print out that array no matter what the array is. Let's go ahead and create our own function. And what we're going to do is we're just going to print out whatever string is actually, you know, we'll just print out a string. So we'll call uh, function uh, print hello, right? Um, and this is the most basic function that you can have. And now I'm going to get rid of this here and I'm going to actually call the function. And I'm going to explain all of this to you in a second. But you'll see here we've got this function and all it's doing is printing hello world. And if I go back to my page and I reload, you'll see I'm getting hello world. Um, and that's simply because of this function call. This is what's going on. If I actually remove this, save this, go back here, reload the page, I get nothing. That's because nothing actually happens. Nothing is calling this function. So to define a function, you use the keyword function. You pass in an actual name. So names have to start with uh, letters or underscores. So you'll see here I'm printing hello world. In Drupal, a lot of times you'll see that they, um, if you're using multiple words, they'll be separated by an underscore, uh, unless you're working with classes, in which case they use camel case, and camel case would look something like, uh, you know, a function uh, print hello world, right? That's camel case, and you see a lot of those when you're working with classes and objects, uh, but that's something we'll talk about perhaps later, depending upon how the rest of the tutorial series goes. Now, this function is just printing out one line. There's no really dynamic functionality to this. It's always going to print out hello world. Let's change that. What we're going to do is pass in a word, okay? Uh, or rather than a word, we'll pass in name. So now this function has to get some variable called name. And rather than print hello world, what we're going to do is print and we'll use that name. So here I'm going to go, I'm going to call the function by going print hello and I'm going to pass in the name Peter. Right. And so you'll see here, I've actually entered the name Peter in uh, in my quotations, but this could be a variable that I pass in as well. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. So let's go ahead and reload this page. And you'll see I'm getting hello Peter now. It's actually using this, this function name here. But if I try to actually go and print name outside of this function, you'll see that I get an error, undefined variable. And that's because this name variable is actually local just to this specific function. You can't call it anywhere else. It doesn't exist. As soon as this function finishes running, it deletes the variable. It no longer exists. It's destroyed. So you can't call name on that. But what you could do is you can make name equal to Peter and then pass in name. And you'll see this a lot, um, you know, more so than you'll actually see strings being passed in or actual literal values uh, because you'll want to have names uh, as variables there. 
So that's that. The other thing that we could do right now, if I don't pass in this variable and I save this, you'll see that I get an error. I'm missing an argument. But let's say sometimes, you know, you might have forgetful people. You can actually pass in a blank here, uh, a default. So I'm passing in John Doe. I can go ahead and save that. And now if I don't pass in a name, it's going to actually say, hello, John Doe. It's going to replace name with the default value that I've defined. And this is how you define a default value. In Drupal, you'll see this a lot where you'll see like array like this because the variable needs to be an array. So it'll be initialized to empty. Um, but yeah, but if I still pass in the actual name, which is Peter, you'll see if I save this, reload the page, I still get hello, Peter, it still uses it properly. So this is kind of like a fail safe, uh, sometimes a best practice. Other times you might have to have that variable. So you want to do that. Additionally, what we should do here is we should have a comment for our function. Um, and then, you know, this just prints a string. And then what you can do, uh, because these are doc gen um, comments, you can add a param. And what the param is, is what this variable is. So this is taking a string, um, you know, string that uh, that is a user's name. Right. Um, so that if anyone ever comes back to use your function, they'll understand, oh, okay, this is going to print out a string and it's taking one argument, which is actually a name. Um, so it's always good to, to comment your code like that. Now, um, we don't always want our functions to print things. Sometimes we'll want them to run some code and return a value back. Um, so uh, what you would do if you were doing that is you'd use a return statement. So what I'd like to do is actually return the string, hello, whoever, right? So hello, and then I'm going to pass the name. And then what we need to do is we can either print this ourselves. So print whatever is returned back. So uh, to do that, actually, we'll keep name, sorry. And I'll add a print statement here. And I'm going to go print hello name. And we'll see what happens when we do this. You see the exact same thing. Hello, Peter. What I could do, though, is I could catch this with a variable and say greeting is equal to print hello name. And then I can go print greeting. And if I save this and reload this, you'll see I get the exact same thing. Uh, what's happening here is greeting is actually capturing the returned value. Hello. And it's coming back to me that way. And then I'm able to print that. So returning a value is one way that your function can do something and hand that something back to uh, a variable or the rest of your code. The other way that you can do that is actually change the variable that's being passed in. Um, so this name could actually be changed. And the way that you do that is what's recalled passing in a variable by reference. So right now what's happening is when I pass in name, uh, it's being passed in as a separate variable. I've got name, which is Peter. It's a copy is created, passed to print hello, it's used and then that gets deleted um, and then I've got to capture whatever happens. But what I could do is take the variable name and, and you know, for simplicity's sake, pass that into the function, do whatever I want with it and have it, uh, those changes be permanent. They don't have to be uh, passed back. You don't have to explicitly do that. The actual variable will be changed itself. So let's get an idea of what that actually looks like. So let's say here I'm going to, um, take name here. And rather than name, I'm going to say greeting, right? Um, so I'm going to take in greeting. And greeting is going to be equal to um, hello. And we'll take greeting. And we'll save that, right? So we're changing what greeting actually is here. Greeting is now going to be equal to uh, hello plus greeting. So we're going to say uh, name here is equal to Peter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to print. I'm going to actually call this function. So print hello. I'm going to pass in name. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to print name. I'll go ahead and save that. Go back over to my browser. I'm going to reload the page. And you'll see I'm getting hello, Peter. Let's actually change this up. Let's go uh, hello, awesome. Go save, reload this page. And you'll see hello, awesome, Peter. So this name variable was originally equal to Peter. I passed it into print hello as a variable. And that variable name for the function is actually called greeting. And so greeting is changed to hello awesome plus greeting. So just to comment this so you understand what's going on. Greeting is equal to Peter. Greeting is now equal to hello 
Awesome, Peter. And so now name is now equal to hello, awesome, Peter. And then we print out name, right? So I don't actually have to return anything here. And that's why I don't have a variable. I didn't say name is equal to print uh, hello name and then print that name. If I do that and I go ahead and I reload this page, you'll see it becomes blank. Um, and the reason for that is you don't need to actually capture this anymore because it's happening by reference. The variable is already being changed. So all you do is you call the function, you pass in that variable and it becomes changed and you can go ahead and print that. So those are functions in a nutshell. Um, just as a brief recap, we went ahead, you know, we looked at a function that can actually print things. Uh, we looked at returning values. We looked at passing in things by reference. In the next video tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take this a step further and actually create a starting lineup for a hockey team. We're going to use the session variable to do that. But rather than have this crazy one file that's going to have all of our different functions, we're going to make everything abstract, call functions in a different file, pass those values back in, and we'll do that by reference. And then we'll be able to print everything out, have a persistent lineup that a user can come to our website and create. So hopefully this video tutorial helped you. It wasn't too confusing, didn't move too fast. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and let me know. And if it did help you, give me a thumbs up. Visit me at torontowebsitedeveloper.com. And if you're interested in purchasing the series, torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. We'll see you for the next video. Thanks very much for watching.